Well, that looks a bit shit. Mmm. Trying to keep the uh, brightness and the contrast down a bit. And I hope that the uh, colours will come out on their screen. Please, no more jokes about the C64 palette. If you look very closely, many Atari ST palettes chosen from 512 colours are very similar to what the C64 offers. Three grey scales, three blue scales, three golden scales, and then the primary colours in two shades. Obviously, uh, some of those are included, but you get uh, two shades of red, two shades of uh, orange, well, I suppose you could say yellow, uh, and uh, an additional colour, they're yeah, brown, and three shades of grey. Which is 200% uh, more than the Amstrad CPC, which is more colourful, but uh, you're a bit stuffed if you want more than one shade of grey. That's always the difference between the uh, C64 and the Amstrad. Plus, uh, of course, the uh, C64 uh, has restrictions on how you get 16 colours on the screen. Yeah, anyway. So, this could be a very short episode because the PC isn't switched on. And we're using the uh, SD to IEC uh, on a real C64. So, you know, it could encounter a lot of problems. Oh, there's uh, two Hawkeye discs here. See, I thought I'd played Hawkeye. And uh, either it didn't work or I changed my mind. Because I had Hawkeye. It's one of the... I stopped buying games for the C64. Mm. There's no exact date, but I'd say between 1987 and 88, I reckon. Yeah. I mean, by then, we've had, we had the uh, C64 uh, serving most of my gaming needs while I owned an Atari ST. And having an Amiga 1000 in 1987, you know, it wasn't money that limited uh, you know, how much fun you could have on the system. It was, there literally was a lot of uh, stuff that just didn't come out for the Amiga. Especially in the UK, where I lived. People didn't import software. Mm, you, you didn't have private inputs. So of course, just a crap throw working doesn't mean anything. Okay, I guess it's a uh, cursor keys. Yeah, I just want to make sure uh, the uh, any kind of high score saver or loader is actually uh, disabled. He can only do that sometimes by switching the cheat option on. However, the way things are going uh, with the uh, pathetic uh, handling of this pandemic, a year later, where, uh, you know, money being generated for big capitalist corporations and keeping the uh, sheep-like state of uh, mass consumerism 
uh, selling people uh, disposable tap so they keep buying and buying which just makes companies bigger and you know more profitable no advantage to you as a consumer if you have to keep buying shit all the time that is not more important than uh, you know keeping every single person who could potentially die from this virus safe is not a balancing act so let's play Hawkeye so obviously it's very smooth and with a decent joystick there's no problem pushing up to jump now you don't get unlimited ammunition on the released game which I think is something I didn't like but, uh, I did like the graphics actually there's a lot of them to get there but um, now on a CRT these uh, images would look much better oh they still come over even if you go off the screen so because you haven't got unlimited ammunition I think that probably pissed me off well, would piss me off now. I don't think back then it would. Because obviously back then, you know, you got your 10 quid or whatever. More like 5 quid for most of the time I had a C64. And you just can't stop them, you see. Uh, but my point is, you spent all your money for the week or two weeks on this full price C64 game and uh, you know like it or lump it you know your options were the games you already owned okay if I could have left the level why is he but the graphics are nice The music is nice actually as well. The coding is very nice. The green light is on on the SD to IEC. I should have an SD to IEC camera so you can see the status of the LEDs as well as the screen. Now of course there's no guarantee it will work but uh, once you've loaded like two levels it probably is going to work although you still get problems with some games but uh, the three lovely shades of grey that the Amstrad doesn't have being put to very good use there sir I must try and do worse next time So, if for any reason you wanted Hawkeye, uh, you know, I'm talking about the game in general, and let's say like me, you owned an Atari ST, Commodore Amiga 1000, or, uh, you know, the old uh, bullnose bread bin uh, C64, I'd buy it on the C64 for the same reason that I fell off the ledge, no, that I bought Bubble Bubble on the, uh, oh, crap. Um, that I bought Bubble Bubble on the C64, see? Well, that wasn't very good. It's not conjuring up any memories for me, though, this game, however... Most of my uh, strongest C64 memories are, um, you know, the earlier games. May even be a biological reason for that. Maybe uh, related to uh, your age and uh, how the brain stores memory and its peak efficiency is actually around those years, possibly. 
pretty much all downhill a few years after puberty as far as uh, mother nature is concerned. You had your few years to sow your wild oats mate out in the uh, universe and uh, that's it mate. Yeah. That's why when people say to me, would there ever be a zombie pandemic? Actually, at that point, I, I either don't want to watch that program or I don't want to speak to that person. It's just, uh, that's just a warning flag, that is. And yeah, if you watch uh, The Talking Dead, you'll see like tens of thousands of people like that. And like, mm, yeah, I don't know. So I don't watch The Talking Dead anymore. So I think the uh, colour choices on this level don't work as well. Ah oh, no! I think you get energy anyway, I'm not sure. The levels are very short, I didn't know they were this short. Okay, you get the idea with Hawkeye anyway. Now, some people may ask, what is your favourite video, Mr. O? And, uh, you know what? It's not that I can't be bothered to do that. There's some weird bug with uh, the way videos... Uh, I select appear on the main page uh, depending on whether you're a subscriber or not see I've gone through the options they offer me at YouTube Incorporated uh, and uh, I just videos get stuck I, I set something and I couldn't get rid of it for like a year and I was like fuck you and uh I didn't even want that video on there, I was just like, mm, I'll put this on there for a couple of weeks or something, and then like for a year, the one for most people who clicked on my, uh, you know, YouTube name, to see my channel, uh, they got a video about the fucking uh, Memotech MTX 500-512 series. Yeah. So even if I did uh, pick one, there's no guarantee that, uh, so I've just seen Kingsoft Anurog and uh, I want to find the Anurog directory now. Because they're not in there for some reason. But no, uh, we did uh, lose one of the uh, SD cards to uh, a bit of a Windows problem, so, you know restoring that card there may have been some changes to what files get copied across but there appears to be nothing in that directory however it is taking too long to bring up that the directory is empty for a truly empty directory ah footy games eh and of course the one I want to play isn't on here And of course they're back to front. Right, so that's great. And yeah, no, generally they are in alphabetical order. So... Let's see if this works first. Now the game I was looking for was Emlyn Hughes International Soccer. Now I did two reviews of International Soccer. Uh, and uh, one was very harsh. The other one was very lenient. Now I think I was very harsh because I set the uh, difficulty to maximum and tried to play a one player game. 
and at that point it had become pretty much impossible to beat the computer so I think that's why I did that but then you should remember it was only 15 quid and it was a 1983 cartridge bargain my BCS games cost 30 quid and uh, you know you can't change the player you control but uh, yeah I think we'll go practice mode so uh, then uh, you get Emily and Hughes anyway international soccer which apart from all the extra bollocks that I'm not interested in like editing names of players and god knows what else you know that's for a, a person who's really interested in actual football real football with humans in reality uh, but there was also a uh, World Cup Carnival which was as blocky as international soccer but it was labelled as one of the worst football games on the C64 now I probably played about eight football games on the C64 and a few on the uh, Master System and uh, I think I'm ready to see if this is genuinely the worst football game. No, we actually want a tournament, so that's a bit misleading. Uh, Sport Billy Productions, 1984. Come on. Player 1, select team. I'll go for Mexico. So hang on, who do we actually have to play? Because there's two blank ones there. Mexico versus Italy. Yeah, using a real C64 with a plasma TV, it's not ideal. Joystick Port 1. Okay, by 1986, most games were Joystick Port 2, but this is by Sport Billy Productions in 1984. Okay, their player is doing some very weird uh, movements. So that is a problem with this game. I can't really seem to get the ball off him. He's kicking the ball back to his area. Uh, he only got a throw in. Oh, no, they grabbed the ball off you really quickly. Okay, the goalie's a bit of a dumb idiot because he just kicked the ball directly to that guy. Who I'm sure there's some sort of offside rule and you're not allowed to do that, certainly not in a penalty box. So you can never change who you control, even if you go off screen. So that is quite bad. However, there are some things that don't make it the worst footy game on the C64. So, so you only get to control one character. And it, when he's off the screen. Now famously, US Gold just bought the rights to this game. So they could basically have... Uh, right, you can switch the music off if you want. So, so they get the ball off you really quickly. So I just found a way to uh, change characters. Possibly. That'd be a bit of a... Oh, it does seem to be changing characters now when I press fire. Yes. Unbelievable. We found the game that has the goddamn motherfucking character change. I don't believe it. It's like finding, finding the Holy Grail in uh, the anus of a walrus that's been extinct for 10,000 years. I don't know. 
I can't really describe the situation to you here. Okay, I didn't get to check that. Yeah, I did there. Yeah, if you move your character off screen. So that doesn't help that they don't change automatically. However, you do have the option of uh, changing characters. Which for someone who had uh, real sports uh, soccer on the uh, VCS. <laughs> okay, it's like you're playing a game of football and, uh, you know, your consciousness is being transferred into like however many Android bodies there are on the screen here. And, uh, so when you pass the ball to the other players, uh, it just bounces off them, like, you know, like there's robots that are in, uh, you know, sleep mode or whatever. But you can actually change characters, and once you know that, you might even be able to score, god damn it. <laughs> what a weird fucking review this has turned out to be. The goalie seems to jump whether you're pressing fire while you're controlling another player or not. Uh, their players are complete assholes. So the goalie keeps jumping because you're trying to get the ball away. Ah, right. Well, when you don't have the ball, it seems that pressing fire button does actually change which character you control. So this 1984 game that gets slated so badly, it's not brilliant. Yeah, he shouldn't have been able to score there. I was on the floor in front of a bastard thing. Am I throwing? No, it's their throwing. So once you get used to like how you change characters, it's a bloody miracle. <laughs> I wish I had an S video cable, so people wouldn't ignore this particular review just looking at how bloody horrible the video quality is on top of the uh, smearing it. Let's see if uh, 4 to 3 helps the situation. Well that's 3D, that doesn't work. C64 is no good in 3D. Even my TV knows that, right? Okay, good. So, that's a pretty good uh, breakfast thing. Now, in the past, I had this uh, really stupid idea where I'd just cut, cut the video like that. Yeah, I know, it's highly annoying, but uh, I had a secret reason for uh, needing a bit of a 10-minute break there. Well, that's the obvious one. The other one was... Uh, the tea in the thermos needed to be heated up in the microwave a bit more. Now, someone asked me what video would I recommend to people. Well, my favourite videos are the ones that are still in my head. Because I can't make them. Because uh, two things haven't happened yet. My workshop has not even been started. Demolition of the asbestos ridden uh, concrete panelled shitty shed that hasn't even started never mind uh, pouring off the concrete base never mind actual building supplies arriving never mind me actually getting on with building my workshop I don't see the point in having a garden that's 5,000 foot square uh, if you're going to have to, uh, you know, basically not have anywhere to work on your car. What's the point, mate?
Now, of course, whoever owned this uh, house when it was built over a hundred years ago, obviously he couldn't afford a car. However, this was a four-bedroom house when it was built. Oh no, joystick port one, you asshole. So there's that, but uh, all things going well with the uh, Ghostbusters review. You are going to be laughing your ass off within the first 15 seconds of that review starting. Assuming I don't put my stupid Retrotronics uh, intro business, I'll stop doing that now. Can't be bothered to use the video editor to do all that bullshit anymore. You can just have the files sliced together. <coughs> right, that's the cold coffee out of the way. We can now get to work with the uh, very, very hot. Now it sounds like I'm going for a piss, that's a bit ominous. Are we looking for ending huge international soccer? I've seen it on here. On the one gig card I've uh, had to use now. Okay, that's enough. It needs to cool down. Probably should have microwaved it for 90. And not, uh, you know, the full two minutes on the microwave. Just 90 seconds would have been enough. Oh well. Get to taste what uh, tea tasted like in Cyprus. Now there's three things I didn't like about Cyprus. One was the milk. Because the only milk you could get, cow's milk. Obviously I'm talking about. Was uh, that UHT shit in the cartons. Which is horrible in tea. Two, you couldn't get nice tea anyway. And uh, three, owning a cheap but nice used car due to the uh, way they worked out the import taxes. That was a bit of a con. So if you had like a reasonable job, like, you know, working as a cashier in a bank or something, you couldn't even afford a car there. Never mind a shitty Renault 9 from the fucking late 70s. Gah! Morris Marina, my ass, mate. You try fucking uh, driving one of them shits. And uh, there's loads of stuff, mate. But uh, I do actually like cloudy weather, rainy weather. I like to see snow at Christmas, not fucking barbecues. So I really... If you live in the middle of Australia, which is very hot, and they don't have uh, snow anyway, even in their winter, which is uh, in our summertime. Now, I can't remember who actually did uh, Emlyn Hughes International Soccer. I suspected it may have been audiogenic, but I haven't got a directory for them in here. So let's try old route. I remember going through these directories to see what was going on. Uh, that's where we were, where we found the infamous Mexico 86, which is a, a rebranded game uh, from 1984. Well, that was a, a bit of a thing. A thing. Uh, the official name for it when something weird happens well that's a thing there's no Emlyn Hughes in here but there is the annual stuff in uh, XX New I think it was after this stage I did the Kingsoft stuff I don't think there's a king soft thing now. Yeah, God, there are so many directories within directories. Boy, have I got a story about that. 
Uh, when I was at school, we had about 15 or 20 BBC micros. I'm not sure exactly how many. Uh, we also had a research machine's 380Z and uh, an 8086 PC, again by research machines, and that was called the Nimbus PC. Uh, and it had a bespoke version of BASIC. I'm not sure if that would work in just uh, DOS on like an Amstrad, uh, you know, 8086 PC or whatever, but uh, that was a very good BASIC. Which is why it was sold to schools. It's annoying now because I do know I've seen Emlyn Hughes on here. Now I had to go and uh, watch a video on how to start a fucking game on Emlyn Hughes. That's, it's a notorious thing. People generally say it's a very good football game on the C64, but it has the most over the top, complicated menu system just to like load the game and start a, a one player game is that you actually controlled as well I mean there's no guarantee I'll know how to do that so let's see if it's in the SD to IEC tested collection which is not tested and neither a full collection so I got two copies of Emlyn Hughes which is a bit ominous I don't know why they've done it as two discs, I'm sure you don't need to load shit. So if you press S again, uh, you'll get the files in the order you're supposed to see them. Oh uh, look, there's uh, a few here, RTI I've never heard of, CON I've never heard of. I've heard of Fairlight. <clears throat> it was audiogenic so the positive effect of all those uh, blackberries in my garden well apparently it's still loading anyway Right, I've set the TV back to a uh, 4 to 3 mode, which is a sacrifice I'm making because uh, I prefer to play the games on the, the largest screen. But the uh, composite video digitization uh, feature for this uh, digital TV, which is a plasma 55 inch Panasonic 3D. Was their most expensive uh, TV except for the 65 inch version of this same TV? Yeah, this tea, even though it's probably been boiled in the microwave, it doesn't actually taste as bad as tea used to taste in cycles. Let's hope the alchemist knows his stuff. Uh, it's always a tense moment. It might not actually work, so if the Fairlight crack hasn't worked, I can't remember what directory it was in now. Oh, bloody hell, it has worked. Okay, we've picked two teams. I think you have to edit the uh, team or something. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's here. Where it says play by computer, you have to type over this. With, uh... There we go. No idea how I did that. Now that should actually work now. Volume is a bit low actually. Oh, just a little bit too far there. So, uh, I don't think you can change characters easily. However, the auto selection of the characters is very excellent. Possibly a bit better than international soccer. It's been years. Well, actually, year and a half since I've done it. Oh, God damn it. Doing so well. So, pick that up as a foul, pick it. Seems to be a tiny bit of inertia to the uh, control of uh, you know the, the players, which I don't like. Um, well, no surprise there. It, it does actually play better than uh, what you might call it. Mexico 86. Score a goal, god damn it, it's the best football game ever. <laughs> That's a bit weird. God damn it. So as soon as another player is nearer the other ball, it does change who you control. So, you know, it takes away that awkwardness from a, you know, single fire button system. That's a bit weird. Why did this shit always happen to me? So the ball has stopped there. He's run off. I think the time has stopped. Yeah, it was going so well. Can you reset the fucking game? That's all good. So that wasn't good. I bet that's never happened on any other fucking video. Because I've never heard anyone have a bad word to say about this game. So, it is good until it crashes. So it's kind of like, um, in terms of, uh, you know, how you play the thing. Right, so at least it didn't crash this time. Maybe you only get three throw-ins before it crashes. So 
So I think this is the only game. All oh, right, I see what's doing. All right. So when you, yeah, they, this is these are not professional football players because uh, they're taking too long to turn around. That's the problem with this game. All right. Now that we've uh, sorted that out. Now they take too long to turn around as well, but I'm not used to that in a game like this. So it is a little bit more than uh, a, a minimal update to, uh, you know, international soccer. In fact, I don't even think the graphics are the same. Oh, hey, what's he doing? That's rude. Um, so there are things I don't like about it that you certainly wouldn't have in a console football game. And um, apart from the idiotic two-player only in television soccer, which I would have liked to play as a one-player game. So I don't know how long each half lasts. So yeah, it's not inertia, it's wasting like frames, drawing them in, turning around, sort of thing. Straight to him, straight to the enemy. So that actually makes it very difficult to control. It's like, you know on uh, Super Mario Brothers, there's that inertia you have to account for. I don't like that in a football game. I can see you might want it in, um, you know, a platform game, but not a football game. They've gone a step too far there. So, and of course, none of the crackers will fix stuff like that. So, so I mean, they have to do it as well, but I'm just not used to it. And, and I have the emotional content of being fucking annoyed by it. Because it's a stupid idea. But other than that, and the fact that it crashed last time. For uh, some weird reason that the ball landed exactly in perfect alignment. On the uh, fucking white line on the screen. Yay, found him in it. Hello mate, hello. Bollocks. The old Vinnie Jones routine don't work. So I do like this game. You know, there's no need for the uh, fans of this game to cry now. Now, fouling seems a bit very difficult. Except when you're like going at 90 degrees to them. When you head on with them, it's very difficult. Well, that's got to be my throwing. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Do the decent thing and throw the ball to me. So it's sort of like halfway between like sensible soccer and uh, international soccer on the C64 and how it plays. There's a lot of extra guff being put in there, which I don't appreciate. So this is a viewpoint I want from a game, but I want something that sort of plays like um, Kickoff 1 on the C64. Come on, man. Come on. That's got to be my throwing in it. Come on, mate, over here in it. I don't want to change that one. So it's too easy to lose a ball. However, I thought we scored the goal was that last time. Ah, uh, that's why it crashed, because I was fucking winning. Dirty sore loser. They're throwing. Ah, the referee's blind, mate. So you can sort of like trap the ball, pretend you're a Glen Hoddle. I don't know. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I don't know anything about 80s football, so I can't really comment. It's a no score draw. So, who's the princess going to give a big. Oh, that might have been half time. Nah! 
I'm going to cheat like the computer because I was winning when it crashed. So I'm turning you off mate. Bye bye little electrons. There we go. Bit the auto start. Even though it doesn't actually do that. That's one thing about the C64. There should be a, a dip switch on the motherboard so it'll auto boot a, a disk in the disk drive. Won't really improve the situation that much for the uh, SD to IC because it's so badly supported. Right, I think the annual stuff was in old root. Possibly, possibly not. Uh, it could have been in zips. Yeah, really you need to consolidate all your directories if I'm honest. I don't think it's in here. Is that Robo, is that actually Robocop 2? Something called miscellaneous sips in a D81 disc image. Oh, I haven't finished watching the uh, Trash Man review. Bit of a weird one, that one. Uh, I think Living Daylights didn't work, so I seem to have done almost everything else here. And spaghetti western, I think there's something funny going on with that one. And Falcon is not Falcon Patrol, but it's written by Steve Lee. A very weird game. Yeah, we're going to have to go the old alphabetical sort. Because uh, I can't find... Ah, it could have been in here actually. Right, what's after B? Is it afterburner? Luckily I had the good sense. Uh, no, I think this uh, SD card is corrupt actually. It is afterburner. Hmm. You know what, I don't know if I've uploaded my review of uh, First Strike yet. Um, so I can't do, there's no point doing Afterburner until that. So there's a separate Annie Rock directory, which may have the Kingsoft stuff in there. Yeah, I think it does actually, but uh, we'll see. What's Mike TMD? What's Maniacs? Mike the MG. Who the hell is Mike anyway? What the hell is an MG? An MG is actually a sports car. Which was uh, quite expensive for its uh, you know, technical sophistication. Produced in uh, England, which has a very strong following. There you go, there's your encyclopedic. Uh, intro. Right, I can't remember if I played Cybertron or Cybotron. No, I played Cybertron because I've still got the uh, cassette right here. See, it was that one. Who remembers that? And uh, we still got to do Soft Aid. There we go. So let's try Cybotron. And the battery warning is flashing on the camera. So you may not actually get to see that. But you had the miracle of Mexico 86. And also 
quite an enlightening Emlyn Hughes review, I think. Compared to the swear fest of the original attempt at reviewing that game. Hmm. Funny thing is, I had exactly the same problem when I was doing it on the emulator. Well, the screen's gone black, the SD card's gone out, and the screen's shrunk. But Anyrock Software presents Cybotron. Right, want one joystick. Press button to start. Okay, well, if you have one joystick, it has to be a joystick called one red eight. <laughs> Why do you have to have uh, a head like Stewie from fucking Family Guy? Oh, you have to push the way, hang on. So uh, what happens if I hold fire then? A fire a actually causes it to pause. Okay, so I can't kill everything. So I must, but I can't remember if I'm supposed to collect these things or not. You're supposed to rescue people. Difficult to tell which of the people I have to rescue with the graphics. With the graphics. There you go, there's one more. I saved it. Oh, no. Well, the battery lasted long enough for that, but I don't think I can, uh, especially not with that bullshit. I'm on hurry up. Uh, I'm not a biggest fan of Robotron by any means. So now how do we play them? You need a joystick in both fucking uh, joystick ports just to start the game. And it immediately defaults to fucking, uh, you know, joystick port. One joystick port. And then you have to press fire on joystick port one. At least you're going to play it with two joysticks. Who the fuck had two identical joysticks? Uh, apart from the shitty uh, ColecoVision or Atari ones back then. It was a very early game. You're not going to have two fucking, uh, you know, Suncom Microtap joysticks or whatever. I think we have to rescue them. Yeah, the graphics seem a bit large for, um, you know, a Robotron game. That's what I'm going to say. And the control is fucking horrendous as well. Come on, go and kill them all so I can get off the level without being killed myself. The selfish millennial attitude. Which almost worked for them, but not for me. But I've got kill in it. So once you get used to the weird controls that they've decided to use, uh, it's not actually that bad. You can't hurry up and kill the fuckers so I can uh, get on with it. Stop giving me extra fucking people to rescue. There's no one else on the screen to rescue, is there? No. So why isn't it zooming me off the fucking level, then? God damn it. Same problem as uh, a lot of uh, unexpanded Big 20 games. Claustrophobic gaming. That's what we'll call this channel. <laughs>